Hello everybody. Today I have a galvanometer which is used to detect the presence of current. A copper wire uh, which is wound over a plastic pipe to make a coil and a second coil which is wound on a iron nail so as to increase its magnetic field when current is passed through these wires okay and uh, i have a set of batteries which i have joined to get adequate amount of current and thereby we will study mutual induction and self induction in magnetism so let us see i have joined the two ends of this wire with galvanometer so this coil is in contact with this galvanometer if there will be any current flow through this wire the needle of the galvanometer the pointer of the galvanometer will show us the deflection and the second coil which i wound on a iron nail uh, the one terminal of it is attached with the negative terminal of the battery and other i have in my hands okay so let me place this smaller area coil just at the opening of the plastic pipe coil so uh, you watch carefully the pointer of the galvanometer so when i touch the positive terminal so i am passing the current through the coil which is wound on the iron nail so watch carefully the needle of the galvanometer so it starts giving deflection okay now let me change the position of this smaller coil so i am inserting it inside so now touching the so you see when i touch the terminal of the crocodile clipper on to the terminal of battery the needle of the galvanometer displaces and comes back to zero see and when i remove it again displaces in opposite direction and comes back to zero so watch it again touching removing touching removing okay so this experiment showed us that the position of the both coils has an effect on the induced emf on the outer coil likewise if we change in the current through the outer coil it will affect the inner coil also so now we will study what mutual induction and self induction are so coming to its definition whenever magnetic flux is changed through a coil induced emf is produced in neighboring coil in such a way that it opposes the cause that induces it so if any wire has a current i through it then magnetic flux is produced which is directly proportional to the current flowing through the wire and if the coil has total number of n turns then we may write it as n phi is directly proportional to i so using these things we will discuss now the mutual induction of two coils so here in the diagram you are seeing two coils which are wound over one another suppose that the two solenoids which are wound over one another are l length long the inner coil has r one it and the outer one is r2 its radius mm -hmm. so outer one coil we have named it s2 and the inner one we have named it s1 so n1 are the total number of turns in inner coil and n2 is the number of turns in outer coil suppose that total number of turns per unit length
is n1 in inner coil and n2 in outer coil. So, if we have n1 and n2 are the num number of turns per unit length of the inner coil and outer coil, then n1 can be written as small n1 times L. So, also n2 can be written as small n2 times L. Now, as we are going to calculate the total flux, so when I2 current is switched on to flow in second coil, the outer coil, then it will rise from 0 to maximum. So, as the current will grow, magnetic field along this wire will also grow from 0 to maximum. So, during this change, so during this transition, magnetic flux changes. So, the magnetic field of outer coil changes the magnetic flux through inner coil. So, as the number of turns in the inner coil are n1, the total flux n1 into phi1. So, we have named these 1 1 because these both things are related to the inner coil. So, this flux change is directly proportional to the current of the outer coil. For removing this sign of proportionality, what we will get n1 phi1 is equal to capital M12 into I2. Here, capital M12 is the coefficient of mutual induction of first coil due to the change of current in second coil. So, now let us calculate the relation for mutual inductance. So, here we are now calculating the value of n1 and phi1. So, let us do that. So, calculating the value of n1 phi1 which is equal to m12. Okay. N1 is the total number of turns of the first coil which we have already calculated as N1 times L. Now, what about phi 1? Phi is B dot A. Magnetic flux is the dot product of magnetic field and the area vector. Now, magnetic field is due to the outer coil. So, therefore, it will be B2, but it is linking with area of the inner coil. So, B to A1. So, magnetic flux is phi 1. So, phi 1 is the magnetic flux linking with first inner coil whose area is A1 and the magnetic field is from outer coil. So, therefore, magnetic field. Magnetic field of the solenoid has a value mu naught N2 because it is from second coil and I2. This is the value of magnetic field. And what about area? Area is pi r1 square. So, we will write here. So, mu naught N2 I2 into area. Area is pi r1 square through which the magnetic flux is linking. So, this is our result of the inner coil. Now, rearranging these terms after you can see here I2 current it is on both sides. So, therefore, it will cancel out from both sides. Rearrange these also. So, mu naught first and N1, N2, pi R1 square into L. So, equal to m12. So, this forms our equation number 1. Similarly, if current I1 is passed through the inner coil, the flux will be linked with the outer coil and likewise the mutual induction of the outer coil 
with respect to the inner coil can be written as m21 mu not n1 n2 pi r2 square times l so you will see magnitude of both the mutual inductance is same we have mu not n1 n2 pi r1 square and r2 square into l so we have a just difference of r1 and r2 but if we assume that both are both the coils are tightly wound on each other then r1 and r2 can be taken equal so the magnitude of mutual induction can be written as mu not n1 n2 pi r square into l so this forms our result for mutual inductance now these coils are placed in vacuum or you can say in air there is no medium between these coils so if there is any medium like uh, soft iron core or anything else so then the relative permeability of that medium will be multiplied with the mutual inductance of the empty coil so then our mutual inductance will be mu r times this thing this whole thing so in this way we can calculate the mutual inductance of two coils now here it comes the uh, on which factors this mutual inductance depends so clearly if we see the formula it depends upon the dimensions of the solenoid so area and length secondly the number of turns and finally the medium in which the coil is placed also the mutual inductance also depends upon the orientation of the coils so you may have also seen in our practical demonstration which we have already done so the orientation with respect to each other that made a difference in the induced emf calculate now the induced emf produced in the coil we are now with the, the formula n1 phi1 is equal to m12 into i2 so if we have to calculate the change in magnetic flux so then we have to take the derivative with respect to time of this quantity n1 phi1 equal to the rate of change with respect to time of m12 i2 so as m1 2 and n1 these both things are constants so therefore they will come out of the derivative n1 d upon dt of phi1 is equal to m12 d upon dt of i2 so now see carefully this quantity so this is the rate of change of magnetic flux for a coil which has n1 number of turns and this will be equal to the induced emf so we can write it as induced emf is in reverse direction so induced emf is equal to minus m12 di upon dt rate of change of current so it can be written as d upon dt of i2 so this forms our important relation that if this di upon dt has unit magnitude so if this di upon dt is equal to 1 unit then what will happen e will be equal to minus m12 so therefore the induced emf produced in a neighboring coil is numerically equal to the coefficient of mutual inductance 
if we have the rate of change of current through the coil is 1 ampere per second. So, in this way we can find the induced EMF. Now, let us coming to the second topic of this lecture as mutual induction is the EMF is induced in the neighboring coil when the magnetic flux is changed through the first one. So, self induction is the phenomena in which EMF is induced in a single isolated coil due to change in flux through the coil by means of varying the current through the same coil. EMF is induced in the same coil and the flux is changed through the same coil. So, both things are happening in the same coil. So, current is changed in the one coil which is proportional to the flux through the same coil and then the rate of change of this flux induces EMF. So, this we are going to study in this topic. Consider that we have a single coil of n turns like this and this coil is attached with the battery and through a key. When this key is closed, suppose we close this key, a current I will start flowing through this coil. So, actually when the key, the key was open, the current was 0 and as soon as the key is closed, the current starts growing through the coil to its maximum value I. Now, as the current grows, also the magnetic field also grows through the same coil. So, around the coil magnetic field also changes. Now, as the current changes, it grows through the circuit and this magnetic flux is directly proportional to the current through the wire. So, now as the we have assumed that there are n turns in the coil, so therefore total flux linkage will be n phi b. So, the whole of the flux will be linked will be proportional to the current flowing through the coil. Okay. Now, this n phi b, if we remove the sign of proportionality, it is equal to L i, where L is the coefficient of self inductance, coefficient of self induction it is also called self inductance of the coil. Now, it is the constant of proportionality. So, when the magnetic flux changes, so we will now calculate the change in this magnetic flux. So, d upon dt of n phi b will be equal to d upon dt of L i. This factor d upon dt of n phi b, this is rate of change of magnetic flux through the whole of the coil. This in turn will be equal to the induced EMF which is produced in backward direction to oppose the growth of current. So, it is equal to minus d upon dt of L i. So, this induced EMF is sometimes called the back EMF. Why it is called back EMF? Because as the grunt starts to grow, it does not let it grow and when the key is 
closed the current grows to its maximum value this back emf which we have calculated over here does not let the current to grow and when we again open the key it again produces in the reverse direction just to maintain the current so it tries to maintain the current so as we have studied inertia in mechanics so mass plays the important role in inertia so likewise in our electrical circuits where we have inductor in a circuit the induced emf plays the role of electrical inertia so it is also called electrical inertia so now let us calculate the formula for self induction so as n phi is equal to l times i so let us put the value of n so if this in this coil we have total n number of turns per unit length and suppose the length of the coil is small l then the total number of turns will be n times l now what about phi phi is the dot product of magnetic field and area so magnetic field of the coil is mu not n i and area is pi r square or you can write it as a only so n l into magnetic field mu not n i times area you may write it here as a only or pi r square so if you know the radius of the coil so it can be written as pi r square so this is equal to l times i this whole thing is the value of n phi and it is equal to li so now i is common in both sides so it will cancel each other so we are left with rearranging these again mu not n square pi r square and l equal to capital l capital l is the self inductance but this l is the length of the coil now if we want to find the self induction per unit length of the coil then l will be equal to mu not we will divide this by small l n square pi r square so this becomes our relation for self induction the self induced emf is also called back emf and the self induction inductance plays the role of inertia so it is very important factor so now coming to the units of self inductance the units are henry or you may write it as capital h only e is minus l di upon dt if di upon dt is unit then induced emf is equal to numerical value as l so induced uh, self inductance can be defined as the numerical value is equal to the induced emf if rate of change of current is unity so coming to the dimensional formula dimensional formula for self induction is m l square t minus 2 ampere minus 2 so inductance has the dimension formula of m l square t minus 2 a minus 2 now as there is a in uh, back emf which opposes the growth of current through the circuit so the battery has to do work so that work done by the battery is the is stored in the form of energy inside the inductor 
so also we can also find then the value of energy of the inductor as half li square. 